Hello, my name is Margaret Lee, and today I'd like to talk to you about navigating an uncertain future. As you complete your higher education and enter the next phase of your life, your path forward will undoubtedly be winding and unpredictable at times. It certainly was for me graduating from Penn 40 years ago. I often get asked, what advice would I give to my younger self? Well, instead of talking to myself, I'd like to offer you, our world's future leaders, my thoughts for navigating an increasingly complex world, a future without many guarantees. And I'll use my own career journey as a backdrop for our discussion today. Growing up, my well-meaning immigrant parents had a single path laid out for me. They wanted me to have what didn't come easily for them, a higher education, a stable job, a family and house in the suburbs. It was a straightforward expectation to basically follow the American dream. And for the most part, I did my best to follow that prescribed destiny. And I was really happy to be accepted to Penn as a Wharton undergraduate. While my parents actually preferred I go into medicine, they accepted business as a solid second. Unfortunately, I didn't enjoy business. And as a result, I didn't do well in those classes in my first year at Penn. So in sophomore year, I transferred to the liberal arts college with really no idea of what I would major in ultimately. Everyone thought my decision to leave Wharton was a terrible one, but I had to pave my own path separate from my parents' expectations. Eventually, I settled in Design of the Environment, or DOE for short, which was a pre-architecture architecture major at Penn. And three years later, upon graduation, I realized that, you know, I didn't really want to be an architect. So here I was, once again, figuring out what I didn't want to do, but without yet knowing what I actually wanted to do. Yes, I was driving my parents crazy with what seemed like endless and immature indecision. But despite all that uncertainty about my major and my career, Penn actually gave me many critically important and foundational lessons which I value to this very day. In leaving Wharton, I listened to what was important to me. And at the time, it was recognizing that I needed to do more than follow a path that was prescribed by someone else. I needed to be motivated and to get energy from my education and the work that I would eventually do. In DOE, I learned that I loved the process of design I love to problem solve creatively, taking into consideration a multitude of factors like who the client was, their context and their needs, what materials might be available, the budget, to name a few things. And that tension of pushing creativity while honoring real world constraints would be applied to many different iterations of my career for the next coming decades. Undoubtedly, your education will give you specific technical skills and domain expertise that will be very important. But that's just the beginning, a foundation to get you started in your first couple of jobs out of school. What my experience has taught me and backed up by a few of these sample headlines is that in the long run, depending on the field of study that you're in, the skills and tools of the trade required for different industries can change rapidly. Many have a half-life of just five years, which means that by the time you graduate, it may be time to reskill. Ultimately, what really matters for the long run is developing a mindset of adaptability and embracing what change affords us. Being able to adapt to change is hugely important because we want to keep up and not get left behind. Having an uncertain path actually helped me to be curious about what else was out there, to pay attention to different possibilities and to see where it might lead me, you know, to be okay with experimenting and failing, to be adaptable to constant change. The world was and continues to be in constant flux and staying open to what was emerging has been a huge factor in shaping where I took my career. So how do we adopt an adaptable mindset and be okay with uncertainty? You know, our mindsets can be deeply rooted. They're shaped by our assumptions, our beliefs, and our upbringing. If I had kept with the mindset that my parents had instilled in me when I was a child, 
I would have struggled to stay in business school and likely would have been unhappy and unfulfilled. Or if I had felt obligated to pursue architecture because I had just gotten my degree in it, not because I felt passionate about it, I likely would have become a mediocre and probably unhappy architect. Believe me, I considered those options of staying with you know, what I had started with because my early mindset was that of being a rule follower and a people pleaser. And this is why our mindsets can be so hard to change. It's something that we've grown up with. It shapes who we think that we are. But with some self-awareness, we can evolve. We can shift our mindsets to serve us better for our future. And what I'm proposing is that we be adaptable to uncertainty, to remain open and aware of what is constantly evolving and emerging around us. For example, after graduation, I pursued roles as a graphic designer. Now this was in the early to mid eighties and we were still doing everything manually, literally cutting and pasting with an X-Acto knife and rubber cement. And when the first Apple computer started coming out, I was hooked. I was amazed at what this little computer could do in minutes, what took me days to accomplish by hand. I became fascinated with technology and it's had a major influence on my emerging and evolving career in first graphic design and later user experience. This was the first of many paradigm shifts that would influence my career direction for years to come. In contrast, I saw some very accomplished designers at the time not make the transition to computers and their careers and their businesses slowed dramatically with some coming to a complete stop. And that was a huge lesson for me to remain open and adaptive to emerging conditions to see where it might take me next. Eventually where it took me was to Silicon Valley the advent of the consumer internet and web 1.0 in the early to mid nineties presented the next significant paradigm shift for me. At the time, there were a few degrees in user experience. So many of the early designers like me were transferring skills from previous professions like graphic design or fields of study like architecture. I worked in various tech companies, learning much of my user experience skills on the job applying many of the lessons from my years as a design of the environment major at Penn, like creative and pragmatic problem solving, synthesizing different requirements and inputs, and being open and adaptive to what might emerge as potential solutions. What carried over from my education was the mindset of design, not the specific drafting or technical skills from any particular class. And one of my most satisfying roles was building and leading the user experience team for Google Maps. I joined Google in 2007 before iPhones or Android smartphones ever even existed. And aside from a few early adopters using GPS devices in their cars, most people, including myself, were still using paper maps to navigate. So while completely commonplace today, this Ability to have powerful computing in our hands wherever we go was a significant paradigm shift at that time. One that gave me so much opportunity to learn and explore, and again, apply that adaptive and curious mindset of design and problem solving that I first learned while exploring my options at Penn. Last year, I made another big change. I left user experience to become a leadership coach. Coaching had not been even remotely on my radar as a career choice until my experience showed me how important it was to develop this flexible mindset in order to be effective as a leader. Luckily, I was able to get coaching that helped me to see this. And through that process, I became really interested in pursuing coaching as my next career. So I have two kids now, one a freshman in college and one entering college this fall. And I tell both of them what I'll tell you now, that what you major in may not be your job in the long run. And I tell them that I worry less about the specific degree that they'll get, as I do hope that they'll come away with a lifetime love of learning and curiosity, because that's what will sustain them long after graduation. So new possibilities and paradigm shifts will continue to emerge around us. Technology, globalization, and unforeseen circumstances like the pandemic 
will affect how we work and communicate with one another for years to come. Again, your career may not even exist yet in the world today, and the career that you think you want may not exist in 10 years' time. So as you enter the working world, I wonder, how might you embrace uncertainty as a feature and not a bug in your future careers? And I say careers in the plural because it's likely that you'll have more than one. Keep in mind that generations of technology just keep growing shorter, meaning there's going to be more paradigm shifts happening more frequently. Think machine learning and artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and Web 3.0, to name a few things. And most careers won't be predictable or linear. And many of you will eventually become leaders in your chosen fields. And leadership will be about, again, adapting to complexity and being able to shine the light on possible paths forward in the face of ambiguity. So getting comfortable with uncertainty will definitely be an expectation of your role as a leader, regardless of what industry you work in. It's not just my opinion. This World Economic Forum report titled The Future of Jobs looked at critical skills for the workplace for the future, which is today since this report was issued six years ago. And the skills highlighted here, complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, judgment and decision making and cognitive flexibility, speak not of some hard skill or technical expertise, but of a mindset a way of thinking about the world and how to approach the opportunities and challenges before you. And the other skills of people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, service orientation, and negotiation require things like empathy and communication and diplomacy, a mindset of bringing others along. In some, these skills are about working well with others combined with having an adaptable mindset. Here are just a few of my favorite resources to continue thinking about how to cultivate an adaptable mindset. Feel free to screenshot this for later. And I encourage you to explore what interests you to just kind of keep fueling your curiosity. And a few final thoughts. Remember to view uncertainty as a feature and not a bug as it can be rich with possibility. And feel free to experiment, try different types of work, Careers don't always have to be upward. Lateral moves into different types of work can sometimes get you further in the long run than sticking with just a single track of work. And the world will continue to change with many things outside of our control. So pay attention to what's emerging around you and go where the puck is headed. And don't fear failure. It's okay to not know and to be wrong and to change our minds. Know your risk tolerance and then stretch slightly beyond that. Be willing again to experiment with your career. And of course, stay curious about all that is emerging around you. One closing thought, when nothing is sure, everything is possible. Your path ahead is wide open. Embrace that freedom. Thank you.